Now coming to the important topic of solder kinetics that is the dynamic stabilizers of the planar humeral joint. First dynamic stabilizer is the deltoid muscle. All three fibers combine to create an abduction movement of the planar humeral joint. But deltoid alone is not able to create an abduction movement of the planar humeral joint. Why is that so? Because deltoid attachment that is from the acromion process, spine of the scapula, lateral clavicle gets inserted to the deltoid tuberosity. Because of this attachment when the muscle contracts it is going to create a upward force that is translatory force which is called as Fx whereas there is a small rotatory force created by the deltoid which is Fy. So deltoid when it contracts it is going to create more of a translatory force or parallel force which is directed upward as you can see here Fx it is uh, translating the humerus upward. So there cannot be a pure abduction without help of other muscles which are rotator cuff muscles. Now this two force creates a resultant force which is tagged as FD here. The resultant force is more towards the translation or translatory force which is pulling the humerus upward because the Fx force is more than Fy force created by deltoid. So one more point here, this Fx force is translating the humeral head upward and it is not compressing the humeral head to the glenoid fossa. Therefore the Fx is not responsible for the stability of the glenoid joint whereas Fy which rotates the humerus away can create some compression force to the glenoid joint. So the important point we need to remember is deltoid when it contracts it creates two force that is one translatory force upward which is also a shear which is also called as a shearing force fx and a rotatory force perpendicular to the glenohumeral joint which is also called as rotatory torque fy now as we have already understood that deltoid alone is not able to create the abduction movement because of more translatory force rather than the rotatory force so the glenohumeral joint needs the function of supraspinatus so supraspinatus force unlike other three rotator cuff muscles that is infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis it has a small superior translatory component Fx whereas deltoid had a large Fx component but it has a large compressing force or a rotatory force Fy which is pulling the humerus towards the glenoid fossa and because of its attachment the mechanical advantage is large as the muscle comes from the supraspinous fossa and gets inserted to the greater tubercle. Therefore, when the muscle contracts, it is going to pull the humeral head towards the glenoid fossa as well as create rotatory movement of the humeral head. So, supraspinous is an important muscle for creating abduction of the glenohumeral joint as well as stabilization of the glenohumeral joint as it creates a large rotatory force and a compressive force that is Fy. The supraspinous muscle is independently able to abduct the glenohumeral joint to full range along with stability of the glenohumeral joint. Now we have understood that the supraspinous and deltoid muscle is responsible for creating the abduction of the glenohumeral joint which is rolling of the head of the humerus upward. But there must be some forces which will pull the head of the humerus downward to create a pure abduction. That is to create the inferior slide of the humeral head during abduction. As we have already learned in arthrokinematics that during abduction the head of the humerus has to translate or slide inferiorly. So what are the muscles that are responsible for creating the inferior slide of the humeral head while the supraspinous and deltoid create the abduction. These muscles are infraspinatus, subscapularis and teres minor muscle. These muscles also create a rotatory and compressive force. The Fy or the rotatory component force, the force that it creates is the Fx force which is downward translatory force that is pulling the humeral head downward on the glenoid fossa. 
the resultant force of fx and fy is the fits force which is which is resultant combined force of infraspinous subscapularis and teres minor muscle the experiment was done by sarki and marder in the cadaver where they found out that if the infraspinous subscapularis and teres minor muscle were inactive or not functioning then there will be only superior shift of the humerus because of the action of the deltoid so there has to be uh, inferior pull which is the fits force which creates a inferior slide of the head of the humerus on the glenoid fossa so you can see the line of force of all the individual rotator cuff muscles you can see supraspinatus is pulling upward and medially or superiorly and medially whereas infraspinatus teres minor is pulling medially and posteriorly and subscapularis is pulling medially and anteriorly so rotator cuff muscles are the important dynamic stabilizers of the glenohumeral joint along with deltoid and long head of biceps so biceps also is responsible for stability of this joint as the tendon blends as the long head of biceps tendon blends with the capsule there is a small space in the shoulder area which is called as rotator interval this space is not covered by the supraspinatus not covered by the rotator cuff therefore this space is also known for its vulnerability where it is a common site for anterior dislocation this space is covered up by the long head of biceps and coracohumeral ligament as you can see this is the space which is a rotator interval space rotator cuff is not covering this space therefore it is vulnerable now let's check the synergic movement of this rotator cuff muscles and deltoid while while there is a dynamic movement of the glenohumeral joint that is during abduction so you can see the supraspinatus is pulling medially and superiorly deltoid has more translatory force upward whereas supraspinatus has more rotatory force and infraspinatus subscapularis interus minor is pulling the head of the humerus or sliding the head of the humerus downward or inferiorly so when all these muscles combine you can have a pure rotatory movement of the head of the humerus creating a abduction movement so this was an important topic and mostly asked during exams that is static stabilization of the glenohumeral joint and dynamic stabilization so these are the preferences which you can go through to understand in depth of all the topics which we have discussed through this video lectures thank you